Good evening and welcome to your evening news bulletin with Television Tong News. Making headlines, His Royal Highness Crown Prince the Porto A Olukalala and Finland's ambassador in Australia officially opens the new honorary consulate of Finland in Nukalafa. 40-year-old father died early this morning at Nafanua Wolf in an incident at sea. And Ministry of Health plans to minimize by 10% the number of people suffering from non-communicable diseases. These are more stories, together with a look at the regional scene, sports and the latest weather update later on in the bulletin. Now for the news in details, I'm Kalolaine Tonglava Paletua. A new honorary consul of Finland in Tonga was launched this morning. The occasion took place at the Low Mile Lodge in Nukalofa. His Majesty King the Bold VI approved in April 25th of last year the appointment of Mrs. Atiloa Fifitalatu by the Government of Finland to the role of Honorary Consul for Finland in March 2013. Mrs. Atiloa Fifitalatu is the first female Honorary Consul of Finland in the region. We we'll join Sinilatu with that report. His Royal Highness, Crown Prince de Bodoa Ulukalala, together with Finland's ambassador in Canberra, Australia, Basi Batokalio, officially opens the new honorary consulate of Finland in Nukalofa. Present at the event was the Crown Princess, Sinaita Kala, Deputy Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Honorable Fane Tupovava Otuivakano, Speaker of Parliament, Lord Fafanua, and many guests. In his speech from the acting Prime Minister, Sami Vaipulu, he represented the government of Tonga in praising the establishment of Finland's honorary consulate in Nukalafa, which will contribute to developing the bilateral ties between the two countries. We do appreciate the friendship between Tonga and Finland. And we appreciate and we, looking, we are looking forward to keep that friendship and to nourish that friendship to the end of our need to be free in this world. Meanwhile, the new Honorary Consul of Finland in Tonga, Ms. Adilor Fifitanlatu, thanked the government of Finland for her appointment to the post. I sincerely thank the eminent government of Finland for the trust and confidence which had been entrusted upon me. I will endeavor to do my utmost to fulfill and accomplish the mission, role, and responsibilities associated with this office. I would also like to acknowledge the kind cooperation of Her Royal Highness, Princess Latu Fuipeka Tukuaho, and her office in Canberra in ensuring that the relationship between the Embassy of Finland in Canberra and the office in Nukalofa is a close one. Today marks a historical shift in our history of establishing relationship between with the raising of the flag of Finland through the establishment of this honorary consulate in honorary consulate in Nukalofa. Meanwhile, Finland's ambassador in Australia represented the government of Finland during the program. Honorary consuls are a very important part of our network, diplomatic network our international network. We have some 400 foreign countries around the world. And we rely on them in many ways. We like to think ourselves, economically speaking, as Team Finland. And honorary consuls are a very important part of Team Finland in any country they offer, in this case, in Tonga. And honorary consuls are normally and often very much involved in business, prominent business people in their countries. And they're very happy that, uh, my minister is very happy that Adiloa accepted to become our consul here. She's a prominent business person in Tonga, many connections to the Tongan economy abroad. And we look to her to help us develop our economic relationship with Tonga. Before the official opening of the Honorary Consulate, a reception was held on Tuesday 4th of March at the Emerald Hotel 
to welcome Finland's ambassador to Australia. Their Royal Highnesses, Crown Prince Kapotoa Ulukalala and Crown Princess Sinaitakala were present at the reception together with Honorable Fani Tupovava Otuivakano. Also attending the reception was the acting Prime Minister, Honorable Samuel Vaipulu, Ministers of the Crown, Heads of Government Departments and Organizations, and many guests. For Television Tonga News, I'm Sini Lato. A 40-year-old father from Mangaha Ewa had died this morning in a lurch. He sustained head injuries and drowned at Nafanua Wharf in Ewa. According to information from New Aki Hospital, when the victim arrived at the hospital around 20 minutes past 5 early this morning, he had already passed away. Reports from the Ministry of Police says police are continuing investigation towards the matter, but it is alleged two small boats collided at sea whilst transporting five passengers from the wharf to the patrol boat Voya Savea, which was anchored at the open sea. It is alleged that the cause behind the incident, both small boats, were without any lights. The boat returning from the Voya Savea hit the outer boat coming from the wharf, where the skipper, together with the deceased, both fell to the sea. A medical officer, Sai Lopavea, says the deceased sustained major head injuries and they are also alleging that the cause of death was drowning. The incident occurred while the MV Onemato is currently on hold with its interfering operations to Ewa until they complete all the requirements from the Marine Department. The patrol boat Avoya Savea was transporting a funeral to Ewa and was expected to bring back passengers and cargoes from Ewa to Nukalofa. The UN Women's Office in Suva joins the people in the Pacific, Tonga included, in celebrating the progress made for women's rights, the empowerment of women and also gender equality in the region. According to information from the UN's office in Fiji, it is important to acknowledge the progress towards achieving gender equality, which has been slow, uneven, and in some cases, women and girls face new and more complex challenges daily. Anna Silfalikaono with the details. The UN Women has set a special date this Saturday, March 8th, as International Day for Women. The theme for this year is Equality for Women in Progress for All. It aims at providing an opportunity to reaffirm Pacific commitments to addressing gender equality together as women and men, girls and boys, and to look to the future of women in development. While progress on MDGs in the Pacific is mixed in the region, there is an unprecedented commitment and momentum to promote gender equality. This is largely due to the high level of commitments from Pacific Island Forum leaders, increased of availability of data, and the development of specific legislation and policies on gender equality and gender violence. In the Pacific, the mandate to dramatically increase efforts to promote gender equality, women's rights and women's empowerment has never been clearer or more urgent. According to El Zira, Sajin Baeva, who is the representative United Nations Entity for Gender Equality and the Empowerment of Women, or UN, Pacific Island countries should be praised for their efforts towards progressing in the areas of the Millennium Development Goals, particularly towards primary education and maternal health. However, there is still a long way to go to achieve full gender equality in the region with major gaps in women's political participation, violence against women and women's access to economic opportunities. Tonga's National Women's Committee are organizing an event to mark the International Day for Women in Nukualofa on Saturday. Real democracy is ensuring that the government provides better public services for its people and for those services to be accessible by all and to remain transparent at all times. The Republic of Indonesia's Vice President, Butiono, clarifies this issue in an audience with 15 journalists from Asia and the Pacific, including radio and television Tonga's very own news reporter, Fadai Fainga'a, at Putiono's Jakarta office in Indonesia. Fononga Koso takes up that story. The Vice President told journalists, that a stable democracy can be reaffirmed with a strong human power that can provide better and satisfactory services in a timely manner to its people. 
He says a developing country like Indonesia with the likes of Tonga in the Pacific region that has a scattered geographical location, they must practice good governance that go in line with an anti-corruption environment for all. Mr. Bodiono also believes that a government cannot stand alone on pushing for a more democratic transition, but a help from the stakeholders is very much needed. This includes ongoing awareness program and trainings for the public in general on the basic component of democracy. Taking this lead, Bodiono says, should be the district and town officers as they are the government's voice towards the vast population. The journalists hold their special audience with Vice President Bodiono on the second phase of the fellowship hosted by the East West Centre, focusing on the challenges faced by developing countries on its democratic transitions. The program started in Honolulu, Hawaii, then to Jakarta. While in Indonesia, the group of 15 journalists will also visit Bendashi that was devastated by the 2004 tsunami and claimed 120,000 people in the area. The Republic of Indonesia is the fourth most populated island on the world with a total population of 245 million people. The government of Tonga has received a proposal from a New Zealand company known as the Tonga Rescue Helicopter Trust requesting the government's approval for its medevac helicopter BK-117 to operate in the kingdom. This was confirmed to Radio Tonga News this morning by the acting Prime Minister, who is also the Minister of Infrastructure, where the civil aviation is under Honorable Samuel Vaipulu. Anasil Falekaono reports. The acting Prime Minister, who is also the Minister of Infrastructure, where the civil aviation is under Honorable Samuel Vaipulu, says this medevac helicopter would assist medical teams when carrying out rescue missions in times of any emergency or natural disasters. Meanwhile, a member of the Tonga Rescue Helicopter Trust, Roger McCutcheon, posted on his Facebook page that he had been working on bringing down the rescue helicopter to Tonga in the past 12 months. He says the helicopter will help quickly transport any patient who has been hurt from outer islands to the main hospital. He also added that once the proposal is approved, they will invite His Majesty the King to board the 6th to name the Tongan rescue helicopter. The helicopter can also be used for similar rescue missions to outer islands in the region, such as Niue. He also thanked the acting Prime Minister Sami Vaipulu for his support to bring the Medivac rescue helicopter and also the New Zealand Minister for Foreign Affairs, Maureen Makali, for looking over the plans. The Tonga Rescue Helicopter Trust is collaborating with a state of the art medical helicopter aiming at saving lives during emergency cases. A terrestrial and marine survey in the Vavau Islands has completed, which highlighted the unique environmental features of the living organisms on the area. The survey was conducted in 12 sites in Vavau, with the participation of scientists and staff from the Ministry of Land, Environment, Climate Change and Natural Resources in collaboration with office, officers from the Ministry of Fisheries, Civil Society and others. The Project Coordinator for Biodiversity Rapid Assessment, Anna Fikau, told Television Tongue News that the survey is part of a series of activities under the project which was conducted within three weeks. Sinla Du reports. The information and data collected from the survey in Vava'u will be used to form together a report that will help point out areas in Mava'o they think can be put aside as a conservation area, amongst any other things. According to the Project Coordinator for Biodiversity Rapid Assessment, Anna Fekau, the report will be formulated with the help of the scientists who took part in the survey and their staff, and the draft report will be out in the middle of this year. The report will help identify areas that need protection, especially to the living organisms there. This will be an income for the people of Avao because some of the areas can be a tourist site. Like for Nuale, there are megapode birds on the island and there are corals on the sea. Tourists like to dive so this could be a tourist site. This are some of the recommendations from the survey team of how important it is to look after the ecosystem. A healthy ecosystem leads to its healthy people. 
If we do not look after our environment, then our people will be unhealthy. We people depend on the environment. Ms. Fikao continued to explain some of the findings in Mava'o. There are approximately 323 types of plants in Mava'o. 308 from the 323 types of plants are found in other islands in Tonga. There are some plants that are endemic to Vava'o only. There are some plants in which scientists in the world are interested in. That's why Tonga and Vava'o are unique. The Tongan whistler is only found in Vava'o and nowhere else in Tonga. It was a surprise to us to find as many whistleblowers because previously some scientists thought that the type of bird had gone extinct. The project hopes for closer cooperation and network with the community in Vava'o to protect their ecosystem. And the Ministry of Health plans to minimize by 10% the number of people suffering from non-communicable diseases, or NCDs, whom are always admitted to the hospital. Dr. Seventeen Tong Moua confirmed this to Radio and Television Tong News during a special planning workshop for the NCD nurses. Dr. Tong Moua says they try to achieve the vision by establishing a new unit within the Ministry of Health to look after NCDs and offer advice for the prevention work. Linda Filiai reports. The aim of this planning workshop is to ensure the delivery of comprehensive, effective clinical and prevention program by the Ministry of Health focusing in combating NCDs in Tonga. Speaking to Television Tonga News, Dr. 17 Tong Moua from the Ministry of Health says they're looking forward for more cooperation between the newly established unit within the Ministry of Health who looks after NCDs. The vision made by the Ministry of Health is to reduce the number of victims suffering from NCDs and are always admitted to hospital. The plan is to reduce this by 10% because the deadly impacts of these diseases. It is important to teach the public on healthy tips and avoid suffering from NCDs. Dr. Tomoa also explained more about the work carried out by the ministry in order to combat NCDs in Tonga. The Ministry of Health has sent out NCDs-focused nurses to various health clinics across the kingdom in order to help the people in the community who cannot come to the hospital due to challenges from NCDs. Dr. Tomoa also highlighted it is vital to avoid such diseases. Taking part in this planning workshop are doctors and nurses from Viola Hospital and Outer Islands, which ends on Friday. For Television Tongue News, I'm Linda Filiai. That's the local scene for tonight. Up next is the Pacific News.